right, folks, welcome aboard the channel. I'm Don. This is Rockin' the Country. I'm doing a gift request. Terry Woods, who's up in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, sent me a gift for me to do Gordon Lightfoot, who's uh, Gordon Lightfoot himself is a Canuck. His song, Did She Mention My Name? I don't know the song. I think you said when you made the request, Terry, that this is maybe 70s, maybe back in the 70s, but Gordon was a really a folk singer. You know, Wreck of the Emmett Fitzgerald, Sunrise, uh, was it Sunrise? Sundown. He is a folk singer, and he could uh, sort of like slide over sometimes into the pop side of folk, if you will. But nonetheless, everything I've ever heard from him could fit with the, uh, under the umbrella of the channel of non-pop country, because folk I consider to be with under the country umbrella. So I'm going to put on my Calgary Stampede hat that Terry sent me a while back which is a very popular music, I guess you could say, festival up in his neck of the woods. What did you say, Terry? He drew 1.4 million people or something this past year. Miranda Lambert was a headliner. Another major country artist go there. It's one of the most heavily attended, if not the most heavily attended, country music event uh, in the world. Something close to that, you know, every year. Anyway, let's see what Gordon's got for us. Thank you for this gift, Terry. And for your involvement in the channel. You're such a good dude. Terry's one of these people that if somebody said, I don't like him, you'd be like, what is wrong with you? Immediately. Like, just that good. So, here we go. Did she mention my name? When and under what circumstances? It's so nice to meet an old friend and pass the time of day. And talk about the hometown a million miles away Is the ice still in the river? Are the old folks still the same? And by the way, did she mention my name? Did she mention my name just in passing? Now who is she? And when the morning came, do you remember if she dropped a name or two? Is the home team still on fire? Do they still win all the games? And by the way, did she mention my uh -huh. name? Yes, high school sweetheart? Someone like that? Is the landlord still a loser? Do his signs hang in the hall? Are the young girls still as pretty in the city in the fall? Does the laughter on their faces still put the sun to shame? And by the way, did she mention my name? Did she mention my name just in passing? And when the talk ran high, did the look in her eyes seem far away? Is the old roof still leaking when the late snow turns to rain? And by the way, did she mention my name? Are we going to find out? I don't think we are. Did she mention my name just in passing? And looking at the rain, do you remember if she dropped a name or two? Won't you say hello from someone? There'll be no need to explain. And by the way, did she mention my name? Look, all right, I caught that line. Looking at her ring, did she mention any other names? All right, so this is a past love of his, and she married someone else. Don't know why the relationship broke up, but that's the sense I get from this. Of course, you wonder. Uh, I'm divorced. I don't wonder. I don't allow myself. I don't know if it's a luxury or that torment. And then after a while, it just doesn't matter. <laughs> And, but in the context of the song, I love the way he developed that. That's just good songwriting. And I write a lot of stuff, but like I'll listen to a song like this and see how it's developed and, and realize that like there, there's a lot more, not that I don't know this, but I learned specifically uh, other components to writing about how to withhold information and the effect it can have. 
And of course, we live out our lives from personal experience. When I teach yoga, what I teach my students comes from my own personal practice. Life coaching, same thing. Life that I've lived, thoughts, uh, things that I've learned, studied, all of that goes into my life coaching. And when I hear a song like this, it's the same thing with my writing. I'm like, oh, what if I just withhold the information instead of being so on the nose, depending on what I'm writing, for example. And this is one of them where we're not given a lot of details, but we're given enough details because Gord Lightfoot, his powers of observation, that's what it is to be a really good songwriter uh, or writer, period, where you're an observer of life. but it ha you have to be so concise. This is a two and a half minute song. You want it to tell a story. You can't put everything in it, but you've got to put enough in it. So how do you create suspense in such a short period of time? Well, you put a little bit of information in there and let it sort of like seep out. But you have to know that that's going to connect. Like you have to have that psychosocial awareness of what's going to connect. And you can rewrite the song, you can add things, and songwriters oh, almost always do that. Very rarely does the first lyric show up in a song, the first write through, because you'll go in and change an adverb, adjective, take out one line, move it to the end, you, you, know, you shuffle things around a bit. But in this, the one thing is, at, the first time I heard him say it, like I thought he said rain, but looking at the rain, do you think she mentioned my name? But it wasn't, I think it was looking at her ring. That tells you she's married to someone else. That little teeny tiny detail sets the whole context for the song. And this guy is still curious, basically, does she think of me? And But you don't know why. Presumably, she ended their relationship and moved on eventually to some other guy. Maybe she moved on immediately to another guy. Maybe she was cheating with this other guy. I doubt it, though, because he doesn't sound angry or upset. He just sounds like maybe it was a, a mutual breakup, and he's just curious, does she even think about me? Uh, I don't know. There could be torment in that. That's for sort of self-control, mental or psychological self-control can be your good, uh, a good friend where you, yeah, it makes it easier in some ways to move on because if a relationship is done, it's done. You don't have to think bad thoughts about the other person, but and you want to honor the love you had or the like that you had for that person in that relationship and not move on bitter. But some folks take it too far and can't move on, don't move on, won't move on. And it's like at some point, that's the advice you need to get. Move on. He clearly has, but... Is the team still on fire? Does it win all the games? And all these different things you wonder. It has this high school reunion, school locker feel to it. And, uh, and he wants to know. All right, Terry, that was a good one. Man, some of you guys, I don't know, you guys sort of, of course, want to see my reaction to these things. And I'm humbled and honored by that. But I know some of you folks think, you might know, oh, is this going to set Don off? Where is he going to go with this? Is he going to see what I see in it? And I love that part, that semi-voyeuristic, curious part of us. And this one certainly sent me off, Terry, so stampeding off. I'm going to rate this. And the number that instantly popped into my head was a 9.0. And it was on the brilliance of the lyrics. I, I like the way he, he talks, sings, Gordon does, and much like, say, Paul Simon. But this was uh, lyrically the strength of it on just the intrigue and the suspense and the lack of detail says a lot. So there it is. Terry, thank you again, my friend. Hats, <laughs> wee, hats off to you. And... Uh, I'll see you on another video. Have a great day and keep rocking the country. Yeah.